Each year, it is our pleasure to work with Hancock Fabrics in the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital Quilt of Dreams program. I am amazed at the talent and creative skills that quilters have today. As each year passes, I am humbled by the hours that are spent sewing quilts that will become treasured possessions of children who are being treated for serious illnesses. A handmade quilt is very time consuming to make, and the children who receive one know that hours have been spent creating these fabric hugs just for them. Melody Good will share these special examples of love and creativity with us today. Beverly Sheldrick will also join us with beautiful silk ribbon embroidery stitches on a very special christening ensemble. Join me today as we begin our quilting journey in my sewing room, and I'm very glad you came to see me today. I'm so happy to have as my guest today, Melody Good. Melody is the Corporate Home Economist for Hancock Fabrics. Melody, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's so great to be back. Oh, so excited about these quilts. Let's just start sharing these wonderful, these are the national winners of the quilts. And I understand, how many, how many quilts were contributed this year, Melody? I think we had about 4,500. Oh, what a blessing. Donated. What a blessing to go to the kids. Definitely. All right, tell us about this one. Well, the quilts are based on the dreams of the children. Then people interpret the dreams and it do fabulous, fabulous work. This dream was a little girl wanted to be a doctor and a ballerina. Therefore, we have Dr. Ballerina. Oh, Melody. Oh. But one of the cute things about this story is that the lady that made this used some of her students to do the posing. Then she created the designs. So a lot of people had a part in this particular quilt. Okay, so she, the children posed to be the ballerina and posed to be the doctor Correct. over here. Oh, this is, and then of course that's uh, St. Jude, that's the hospital there. Right. Oh, how exciting. Oh, precious. Oh, me. Tell me about this one. Well, this one is using a lot of the St. Jude fabric and have a flower, different colored flowers. And as you see, there's children of all ages and nationalities shown inside the flower cups. So this represents all the people of the world that St. Jude's touches with their treatments. Which really is the whole world. It's the whole world. Directly or indirectly. Oh, exactly. how sweet. And it has all the little children in the applique flowers. So bright and happy. Oh my goodness, how interesting. This is one of my favorite quilts. Oh. This was made by an eight-year-old. No. Yes. This was her second no. quilt. These are the scraps left over that her aunt had made a quilt. This is the scrap quilt, second quilt by an eight-year-old. Fabulous. This is pretty much unbelievable. Very, very nice. Look at the artistic ability. The color combinations and everything are just great. Oh, an eight-year-old made eight -year -old. this quilt. Second quilt. Second quilt. Well, Melanie, that's amazing. Oh, how beautiful. Reach for the sun. This is dealing with the hopes and the dreams of all the children affected. Reach for the sun, even if it's behind a cloud. Yes. Oh, what a wonderful dream for children fighting catastrophic illnesses. Reach for the sun. You. you know what? That's a really good thing for us and, and our viewers who have a cloud in their lives right now to think about. Reach for the sun, even if it's behind a cloud. Beautiful colors. Beautiful. Oh, how pretty. This is just a basic quilting technique, but the colors really pop in the way they've been positioned and the star that's created in the center of the on-point diamonds that you see here. And I just love all of these wonderful St. Jude fabrics. This has balloons and there's a butterfly, more, well actually butterfly, and then there's a rainbow. And I really love the colors, the brights that go all the way around the outside. Well, they're designed to make children cheerful and happy. I never shall forget the day that I was there when the Hancock employees went up and we unloaded the quilts and gave them and all over the hospital. The children were wrapped up in their quilts as they were being pulled around on their little red wagons. Oh. Very happy comforting. day, happy day to see the children with their quilts. Oh, oh. This one you have to look a little bit closer, but you see the little faces of the oh. children from the fabric in the wings. Oh, cute. These are the and little faces. It's on the wings of hope. This, well, this is beautiful. Very artistic. Very, very artistic cool. and very, I just love the fact that the children are on the wings of the butterfly. Well, mm -hmm. is that a butterfly? I think it's a dragonfly. Dragonfly, <laughs> but very, oh, very it's pretty. Very, very beautiful. 
This is another mm -hmm. fabulous, and one is just oh. more fabulous than the oh, next that's one. That's the truth. Each one of these children have a different thing that they would like to do in their lives. And if you notice, each one of them has a pet. There's a cat or a dog or several in each. This is hand quilted, hand appliqued. You know, I think if I remember correctly, a lot of the children dream about having a pet because I believe that usually during treatment of catastrophic illness, uh, okay. animals are not allowed. And I remember so well the dreams and every one of these has a pet. Oh, Melody, this is beautiful. And this is a tree of life and it just shows the different things that the children wish to do and have been made up in the fabric. My goodness, here's a nurse, here's a, a, a little child jumping up and down, there's a policeman, there's a, a laboratory person, there's a, a businessman, and just all kinds of occupations. And this is kind of a stack and whack treatment where you cut up the fabric and create a kaleidoscope look. So this is another quilting technique, which adds a little different look to the actual quilt itself. Very, very pretty, very bright, and very cheerful. When I grow up, I want to be, now let's come back here and read this. Okay, I guess it's upside down. When mm -hmm. I grow up, I want to be. Want to and be, isn't yeah. that wonderful that these children at St. Jude, we have dreams of what we want to be when we grow up. And isn't it wonderful that over 80% of childhood cancer is now curable. Oh, how beautiful. And this is just very beautiful in its simplicity and the quilting is fabulous. The stitching, the words have all been stitched on by hand. To oh, complete. Melody, this is, well, this is fascinating. Mm -hmm. Look at this, can you read it? Can it sorry. says, St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, you make my heart smile, my soul sing, and my dreams go bling bling. Oh, this is absolutely, absolutely incredible. Let's hold this one up one more time and we'll just put it back there. Melody, thank you so much. And we'd like thank to thank you, all of you who are involved in, in this uh, Quilt of Dreams contest for the children at St. Jude. And now I have a so quick, so easy project to share. This is the most wonderful idea for gifts of all kinds, as well as a special treat for your own bed, making a silk charmeuse pillowcase. We're really making any kind of pillowcase, but I wish every one of you could be here in my sewing room and just feel the feel of the silk charmeuse. This really is very easy sewing. There are only two real seams of construction, this side and the end, and by the way, the end is the last seam that you put in. And of course, we have to hem the bottom. So it's a piece of fabric folded over with a French seam here, a French seam here. Now look at the beautiful uh, machine embroidery on the bottom of this pillowcase. It is, we've used a beautiful antique embroidery, but wouldn't that be beautiful to put monograms? Oh, I just think the bride and groom would love this particular gift, but I think anyone who sleeps on a pillow, and that might be most of us, would love a gift like this. The beautiful machine embroidery and then this is purchased rayon lace. It's, this is so easy to make, but there's one little trick I want to tell you about. You must starch the silk charmeuse very stiff. Otherwise, it's, too, it's kind of ravelly and hard to work with. So remember, silk charmeuse pillowcases mean a lot of spray starch. I'm going to put this beautiful pillow over here. Now, let's just quickly go over how it's constructed. All right, I have folded it in half. This is the whole, pretend like this is the whole pillowcase. So I folded the fabric in half, and I've done about, a, oh, maybe a little bit more than a quarter of an inch seam on stiffly starched silk charmeuse. Then to do a French seam, I have to trim this down pretty closely. I'd say to within about an eighth of an inch. Then a French seam, let me pull this up and show you. All right, now that I have stitched it, and trimmed it. And to make a French seam, what I do is just fold it over and make a little casing for that seam that I have just trimmed. And then I straight stitch along there. And that is a beautiful French seam. And you would need a French seam on this silk charmeuse, or else I guess you could use a serger too, of course. Then the next step on this pillowcase 
is to fold up a little one quarter inch seam allowance and then fold up a beautiful hem. Now with my pillowcase, since I had a wonderful machine embroidery, you would do the machine embroidery before you fold up the hem. This is about, oh, I think a three and a half inch hem. It is a beautiful hem. So if it were machine embroidered, that would go on first and then the hem would be folded up. Once again, spray starch silk charmeuse. If you do not, it will be too ravelly and, and difficult to work with. Then after you have straight stitched the bottom hem, now remember the whole pillowcase has been finished. You've done the sides of the pillowcase with a French seam, the top of the French seam. Then you bring your uh, purchase, this is purchase rayon lace, which is beautiful. And you sew it all around on the outside. You don't put any of the lace in any seam. Remember the seams are already finished. Now let me just share one more little trick. What do you do? You said, Martha, you don't put that in the seam. No, you don't. When your lace comes up to where it's going to meet it would be nice if you could match the patterns but probably you can't unless you've cut it very carefully or unless it's just the right size so you bring the piece you butt the two pieces over each other and then you can just zigzag through the pillowcase to attach this top area the bottom area would be left loose and then you trim away the excess as little overlapping as you have is is the better is it's much better as little as possible okay then you straight stitch of course you did this first before you butted them up you straight stitched it down butt the pieces over zigzag them right through the pillowcase and you have one of the most beautiful and one of the easiest projects you could ever make and now i have some wonderful hand embroidery stitches for you I'm so pleased to have as my guest today, Beverly Sheldrick, my friend from New Zealand. Beverly has authored several books on needlework, has taught all over the world, and is a regular contributor to So Beautiful Magazine. Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's wonderful to be with you again. Now, Martha, today I would like to show our viewers this wonderful, um, big, fluffy rose that we've got here. I was really pleased with the way this rose came out. And here I'm using the seven millimeter ribbon. You'll see it's here, and then it comes all the way down and down and round, and you'll find them just down here. I think I was really pleased with these. Well, Beverly, I'm really pleased with this Christmas dress, <laughs> uh, which I have to say to our viewers that this was commissioned for our new grandson, William Joseph, and he will certainly be Prince William in this dress. He certainly Beverly, will. Beverly, we are thrilled. And this beautiful rose you're going to share with our viewers today. I am. Now, we saw here, we saw it in the, in the bigger ribbon, the seven millimeter ribbon, as I said. Now here you will see I've used exactly the same rose, but I've done it in a four millimeter ribbon. It's, it's always very pretty done like this, but um, if you want it, you're, I'm just going to show you here what I've done. Now, we, of course, we have that little knot of three French knots here, which form the center. You'll then see with this one here, I've used the four millimeter ribbon, but I've gone round twice, and so therefore I've got a much more fluffy rose. It's a little bigger. This one you can see here, I've just done it going round the once, but putting quite a lot of fullness in it. And at the end here, I have one done in the seven millimeter ribbon. And you only go around the once with that. Otherwise, it just looks like a huge cabbage rose, which <laughs> wasn't quite what we wanted. <laughs> so here we are. We're back here. We've got this first of the, the French knots. And of course, over and back, put it in and pull it tight before you take it through. If you do it like that, viewers, you'll find you'll never get your French knots waving in the breeze at you. So there's our first one. Now, the next step, you can see I've changed to my second ribbon, but you'll also see that I've got a needle here with some machine thread in it. And it's usually a color that's fairly similar because we don't really want it to show. But this is what's going to happen. I'm going to take this needle and I'm just going to pick up a wee pleat like this. You can see how I'm bringing it back 
over my fingernail and down to there like that. I'm actually drawing it right back to where I started. Now I'm going to come forward approximately, approximately an eighth of an inch, might be a tad less. And it's also very helpful if you keep your ribbon going like that. So turn it, bring the needle up like this, put your finger on it, and then just scoop up just a little pleat like that. I'm bringing it back over knee, over my where my finger is. That helps to keep that little pleat in place and then take it through again. So I'm coming round again to this side here and once more take, bringing it up like that. And you just keep on going like that. Now you will see I've got one here that I've gone all the way round. I'm now going to just, can, I want to make it a little bit bigger. So therefore I'm just going to, using my needle, just scoop this over here like this. And I will take this once more, this little piece of machine thread, and I'm once more putting those little pleats in here, in underneath it. See how I'm just dragging that back. I'm hoping that you can get that, but I'm not coming right back into the inside. I'm just hiding the little stitches there underneath like that. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is you can see here, I've threaded up some of this seven millimeter ribbon and just find ourselves a needle. And this time, because I've got this wider ribbon, I'm going to actually have to take um, like a double little pleat. Be otherwise you don't get enough fullness for it to sit nicely as it goes round. So here I am, I'm picking that up. You can see I've taken almost half an inch there. They do take quite a lot of ribbon. And I'm going to just pick that up and I'm going to pick up yet another little piece like that and come right back to there like that. And I'm just going to hold that, put my finger on it and like that. Move this round like that. You can see I've come, I've brought this right the way back like that. So I'm coming up again. At this time, I would barely be moving more than a 1 16th of an inch. So here I am once more, just trying to keep my fingers out of the way for you. So you can see, so there I am picking up that big pick and another big pick and right back to there and there we are. If I was to keep going, I would end up with just a lovely big rose in the way that we have on this gown, but very effective. Oh, Beverly, I am absolutely thrilled with this gown, with the little booties, with the uh, christening blanket, with the bonnet, with the slip. And I'm especially pleased that we've learned how to make that beautiful <laughs> rose today. Beverly, it's, thank you so much. That's my pleasure, Martha. <laughs> and next I have a home decorating project for you. I have the most wonderful home decorating project for you. They're bell pulls. And I remember the very first needlework I ever did was a bell pull, the very first hand cruel embroidery. I'm so excited now that we have machine embroidery. It makes it a lot faster. These are absolutely so easy to make. It's totally wonderful. These are, I'm going to show you how to put it together, but as you can see, there are three different machine embroideries and the decorative stitching just kind of divides the three sections. Here we have a Christmas wreath and here we have Christmas bells. We have two different types of bell pulls and all in the world you do to attach it to the top is make a casing. When you purchase the bell pulls at a hobby store of some kind or wherever you buy needlework products, you just, these uh, little ends come off and you slip the little casing on the top. 
this uh, metal one, the brass one, is a little bit different, but it's very easy to do. You see there are two screws on the back, and you unscrew this little piece right here, slip it on just like a curtain rod, and then put your screws back, and that's how these are held together. It looks like it's really complicated to do, but it isn't. You just make a little casing in the top. Now then, these are very, very easy to do. First of all, you can see I have a much wider piece, and those three rows of decorative stitching, well, I happen to be very fond of wing needlework. So I'm going to finish up the second row here with the wing needle. Uh, it's kind of a baby daisy with the wing needle. Absolutely beautiful stitch. Anytime I do wing needlework, whether it's on Silk Dupioni or whatever it's on, I do use a stabilizer. In this case, I have a tearaway stabilizer behind here, which is one of my absolute favorites to use. All right, I go all the way across. As you can see, this is a little bit wider now. It's a little bit wider than my finished piece is going to be. Okay. Come in here now. I have the wide piece, so next what I'm going to do is fold. Here's the wide piece. I'm going to pull away my tearaway stabilizer, of course. And then I'm going to fold it in half. Wait a minute, right sides to right sides. I'm going to fold it in half. And then I will stitch this end, these ends together, as you can see I've done here, let me fold to turn it over, you stitch the two sides together, press it where your machine embroidery show, and you see, remember I've already done that wing needle entredeau, or wing needle baby daisy in this case. Then after it's all finished, I will turn down a little bit, and then I'll turn down the second little bit, and then I will straight stitch along each end to make the casing. And then after I make the casing, I will go back to my purchase bell pulls and slip the casing right on this little sort of a curtain rod piece, not really a curtain rod, but the little piece behind here and then screw the screws back on. I will slip this casing on both ends, put the end finial on, and then just probably glue that so it won't fall apart. And now I have a beautiful piece from my antique collection to show you. This is a magnificent christening dress. As you can see, it has the little short sleeves and the scoop neck, which had the drawstring to pull it up. Do you notice the princess line on the front? The skirt goes all, I mean, the whole bodice is one piece. That's a very early piece. It has wonderful tucks with little spaces, the beautiful Swiss embroidery, and the little ruffles with the French lace. Notice how beautiful the front panel is that goes all the way down to the skirt. And this is one of my absolute favorite skirts in the whole world. Look at the three little delicate ruffles right here. And then the skirt continues down with more of the tucks and the lace insertion with a big, beautiful hem. The back of this dress is absolutely beautiful. It has the most wonderful sash. And this sash is quite a long sash. I've not seen one on any of my pieces that were this long. So there's a big, wonderful bow tied in the back of the dress. And would you please just enjoy the beautiful tucks that are in the back. Um, all of these are made completely by hand. I think it's interesting how this mother made different sizes of tucks to go on the back of the dress. For my sewing from the heart today, I have a wonderful letter from Christine Thompson from New Hampshire. Dear Martha, the group of ladies that are my students are wonderful. At this time, we're making caddies for walkers to donate to local retirement and nursing homes. Each lady has been asked to dig through her stash of fabric to see if they could donate two thirds yard of material or more. I plan one to two days and evenings a month for these ladies to come and sew, socialize, and know they're doing something really nice for someone else. I have ladies who are students who are mothers, homemakers, retired, and those who work full time all find the time to come and sew. My philosophy is that the Lord put us here on this earth to help those who can no longer help themselves. Thank you so much for letting me share this with you. May God bless Christine Thompson from New Hampshire. Christine, thank you so much for this wonderful time that you and your students and your friends are putting in making these uh, caddies for the walkers. Thank you so much for joining me today in my sewing room. I'd like to invite you to come back next time.